Hey guys, Chris Dick here for another SQL uh, server tutorial. Um, a question that I've been asked recently is, uh, where do I find my database? And I'm also going to address a couple uh, issues where um, people are trying to copy that file or, or, or compress the file and, so that they can send it to someone by email or what have you. So we're going to look at that. I'm also going to look at uh, doing these a little bit more uh, cross application. So I've got SSMS open here and I'll show you in Visual Studio as well. So first off, we're going to talk about where is my database located. So if I'm in SSMS and I have my local DB demo open, if I right click on student tracker this database and you can track you can you can open up any database that you have you can do the same thing um, in this properties window you're going to see the files um, section or selection here you'll see paths and then you'll see an MDF file and an LDF file the MDF file is our main database the LDF is our temporary log file that is created whenever our database is opened and it manages some short-term memory um, functions. We'll cancel out of that, okay, and we'll go into Visual Studio now. In Visual Studio, under the SQL Server Object Explorer, uh, I already have my local DB demo set up, okay. If I, uh, first of all, you know, and what's, what's good about um, uh, Visual Studio is it, it provides a little more information actually because it'll actually tell you where the instance of the database is stored and if you look here uh, in my tooltip let's see if I can widen that out a bit so you can see it so it is in my C drive users CDYCK uh, app data local Microsoft Microsoft SQL server local DB instances local DB demo. A lot of stuff to remember there, no doubt. If I go in there, let's go over to where that uh, that is. Actually, we're going to load up another instance of File Explorer because we'll come back to that one. Paste that, that in and you'll see there's a few different instances. So in other words, I could come back and, uh, you know, if I'm trying to remember what to, what instances are available on my uh, my computer right now? Uh, these are all the the, in, the uh, instances I've got available to me. Okay, but we're only going to be dealing with the one. All right. Now, um, now that I know that, uh, I can now look at where is my uh, student tracker located. Okay, and this is. We've already showed you in um, the SSMS. Now we're going to do it in here in uh, Visual Studio. If I scroll way down to the bottom here, okay, we're going to find the data file. Okay, it doesn't show where the log file is, and most likely because it's just a temporary file, and they didn't feel it was necessary to put it in there. Um, whereas SSMS tracks both files. Okay, so. From this point here, I, uh, I can find out that I'm in that same location. If I go to, over to File Explorer, I look at that uh, G local demo DB data, and I see an MDF and an LDF file. Okay, so both locations tell me the same information. Okay, now something that also comes up uh, from time to time is people are asking, how do I uh, take this file and compress it and send it someplace, right? Now, everybody would want to just simply right click here and send to and go to compressed file. What's going to happen though is that if I have used my database, uh, in other words, there's, uh, there's some connections open, let's say I've run a query or something else is going on. Uh, if I try to compress this, right, I will get a file not found or no read permissions, okay? And then it deletes my zip file. So what I have to do is I have to physically disconnect 
some of the things that I've done. So if I run a, a little query here, um, I have to disconnect that. Okay. Um, let's show you what happens now. Okay. Uh, I haven't disconnected, but it's still, uh, it still shows that I'm using it perhaps. But uh, in this case, I'm not using it anymore. Okay, so it's basically that something would be locking the file. And this is something that comes up periodically. Um, there may also be cases where you physically have to detach that file from the database or from the, uh, from the server instance. So easy enough, it shows me as having one connection. And I don't know where that connection is, but uh, we're just going to drop the connections and uh, I'll just do this here so you really can see it. Okay. Sometimes it helps. All right. And if I push OK, it uh, takes a bit of time to do. All right. So if I refresh that, I don't have any more databases in there. Okay. I, if I delete this zip file, I'm also now able to compress that file as well. Okay, so there's that way of doing it. All right, now if I go into Visual Studio and if I refresh here, I should see that I've got no databases available. Now, if I go into Server Explorer and go to Add, uh, add a Connection, okay. Uh, that's this little button here. Let me just uh, show you so that you can see what comes up. Connect to database. All right. I can type local eb slash local. Let's spell it right. Local db demo. Okay. And go to attach database file. Okay. Do that. My logical name, I want to make sure that it's the same name as it's always been. Okay. I can test a connection there. It succeeded. I press OK. It shows up here. No problems at all, right? Okay. Now, the next thing that I can do, if I go back over here, I should see that that connection is here. And it is. Okay. So the two are, are, are pretty much linked. All right. Uh, if I go over to the SQL Server uh, Object Explorer, I can refresh that as well, and I'll see it in there too. Great. Okay, so those uh, address some of the con questions that have come up recently. Uh, I hope it helps you, and um, we'll catch you in our uh, next tutorial very soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy.